What will astronauts use to survive on Mars? We can all hope SpaceX makes it to Mars in the 2020s, but there aren't many details on what they will use to survive. And I can't wait for them to release more details about what they plan to use, but in the meantime, we can daydream about what it will be like when NASA goes to Mars. Where will the astronauts sleep and eat? How will they get around? And how will they have electricity? On April 13th, 2017, NASA published their plans for human exploration beyond low Earth orbit. These plans lay out NASA's long road towards a manned mission to Mars. The plan is broken up into four phases with the first manned mission to Mars projected by the early 2030s. And the last part of the plan involves establishing a surface habitat system for a crew of four with power, a rover, and on-site oxygen production by the late 2030s. The Mars surface habitat will house the crew up to 500 days, and it will be capable of converting carbon dioxide to oxygen with the power supply capacity of 40 kilowatts. Currently, there is no official development program for the Mars surface habitat, but NASA has been sponsoring programs to brainstorm different kinds of designs for the Mars habitat. Some ideas are pretty wild, ranging from MIT's tree habitat to 3D printed habitats. But I imagine it will be like the Habitat Demonstration Units, or HDU, which was tested at the 2011 Desert Research and Technology Studies in Arizona. The Habitat Demonstration Unit project started in 2009 to develop an operational habitat configuration. Let's check it out. The HDU measures 5 meters diameter, 3.3 meters high, with the volume of 148 cubic meters. It features a much needed airlock so that astronauts can transition between the safety of the habitat to their spacesuits and the Martian environment. It has a medical operations workstation that includes a surgical table so that astronauts can ensure good health. It has a geoscience lab workstation so they can analyze Martian rocks and soil and also select samples to return back to Earth. It has a hygiene module, a telerobotic workstation where they can control robots to help them explore hard to reach or dangerous places. It has an SCV deck where the rover attaches to the habitat so they can transfer easily to and from the rover. It has a general maintenance workstation, which is where they will work on various repairs. And as you can see here, there is a cool elevator to take them to the second floor where the crew galley and quarters reside. So it looks like astronauts will have plenty of things to keep them busy inside the habitat. Let's now explore how they'll get around outside on the Martian surface. The astronauts will travel around in NASA's Space Exploration Vehicle, or SEV. The SEV is an incredible electric-powered rover that NASA has been developing since around 2007. It measures 4.5 meters long, 3 meters high, with a payload capacity of 1,000 kilograms. The SEV has 12 wheels that can pivot 360 degrees and can travel 10 kilometers per hour in any direction. It's designed to last 10 years and thousands of kilometers in its lifespan while requiring little or no maintenance. It features a pressurized cabin designed to carry two astronauts which can live inside for up to 14 days as it has areas to sleep and sanitize. The cabin is heavily shielded so the SEV doubles as a radiation storm shelter and in emergency situations it can hold up to four astronauts and it has a docking hatch where it can connect to the habitat which we discussed before. Alright, so astronauts will have the habitat to keep them safe and allow them to conduct experiments and they will also have a cutting edge rover to explore the Martian surface and now let's explore how they will power these systems for multiple long duration missions. The habitat, the oxygen conversion system, and the SEV will either be powered by solar panels or nuclear power. But NASA seems to be leaning towards nuclear power for the Mars missions. Steve Jerzyk, Associate Administrator of NASA's Space Technology Mission Directorate, points out that Mars gets less sunlight than Earth or the Moon, and it has very cold night temperatures, and has dust storms that can last for months and engulf the entire planet. The nuclear power source is called a kilopower reactor as a result of the Kilo Power Project, which started in 2015. The Kilo Power Reactor is a space fission power system with a simple design and few moving parts. The reactors can provide up to 10 kilowatts of electricity, which is about enough power to run two average houses continuously for at least 10 years. 
The reactor splits uranium atoms, releasing heat energy, which is then converted into electricity. And according to NASA, just one pound of uranium can produce as much energy as three million pounds of burning coal. They would like to send four to five of these reactors to power everything they would need for the Mars mission. And if you're worried about launching nuclear reactors on a rocket into space, NASA says not to. Unlike a traditional reactor, the kilo power does not have the same risk like a melt down and massive radiation. NASA successfully tested the reactors in November and will conduct further tests in March. And they're also talking with commercial companies proposing that the reactors might be valuable for their space exploration efforts. Based on that, I can see SpaceX using the kilo power reactors on their Mars missions as well. Going back to NASA's plan, the first manned mission is projected for the early 2030s, which I think will feature the SEV on that mission, but they aren't projected to deploy the habitat until the mid to late 2030s. But that's so long from now, it, it may happen sooner for all we know. Alright, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like. And if you want to know how cool life will be like in the future, join the Neoscribe tribe and subscribe. I am Neoscribe, and see you on our next journey.